What is sitting inside the Pivab Advanced course? Fine. We have a bunch of questions which are uh, handpicked, which are tailored to help students unravel ideas. And so we create mechanisms to help them come and land at and intuitively land at one concept or funda or idea. So in schools, we are given a concept or a theorem and then the application is thought. What we at PyWeb Advanced do, we create a bunch of mechanisms to come and arrive at this funda as organically and intuitively as possible. On top of this, what do we do? We take a bunch of questions at, uh, from non-routine Olympiads across several countries, handpick them so that they are exactly relevant for the level of difficulty for our, our students uh, and involve a level of figuring out and, and sitting and trying different ideas. So they need to keep knocking on the door and see which one opens, how they can unravel a particular question. That's the theme of the entire course. And so the, the idea behind this, the more practice they get in figuring out, the, the better they get at receive, receiving newer ideas and newer concepts. So the entire course is going to be big, based on how am I going to figure out the nth template and not based on creating seven templates or 10 templates. And so I've given you a lot of idea about how to unravel. Now, the automatic question is, are our students ready for it? We'll make sure that the syllabus required to handle this is minimal, but the application required is very high. And according to me, that is the, that is the holy grail when you're preparing for uh, uh, receiving tougher and tougher ideas. Given okay, a lot of frameworks for it, I'm gonna leave you with a lovely example. My favorite, one of my favorite questions. Uh, that's the chessboard, eight by eight. So 64 squares are there on the chessboard. You have numbers from 1 to 100, natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you're allowed to, you're asked to put numbers on each of these squares. You have to fill the 64 squares with numbers. Remember that several squares can have the same number. You can put 5, 5, 5, 5, and then 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8. You can fill with repetition. There's only one condition to filling the square. That's great. The average of all the squares adjacent to any square should be equal to that square. So if you take any one square, the value sitting in that square is equal to the average of all the squares adjacent to it. What do I mean by adjacent? Classic English adjacent right next to. What do I mean by right next to? It can have either a side common or a vertex common, either a point common or a line common. And so not rocket science as far as the definition of the question goes. The idea here is to find out how many ways can we fill this square such that that one condition is satisfied. And very, uh, the, anyone can understand this question. Now comes the big bazooka. I'm gonna tell you that this seemingly difficult, oh my God, really tough question, can be solved by, by class six student who does not need any further syllabus than this. So if you have a son who's son or daughter who's 11 years old, give it to them. Ask them to fill numbers, ask them to try it out, ask them to take a chessboard, ask them to spend half an hour, 45 minutes, it doesn't matter. If they go away taking one idea from it, that's worth its weight in gold. A key feature of this course is that we dig deeper into ideas and do not just go ahead. Very often I find that when you're teaching class six students, we add in class eight, class nine syllabus and make the course tougher. That's an easy fix, it's a plug, but that doesn't work. What we want to do is reinforce fundamentals by doing a bunch of things that are trickier and include more application but within the same syllabus framework. I firmly believe that the syllabus framework is sufficient to amp up application and make it tougher. And we should not be going ahead because that causes several complications later on. And so going deeper is the most important idea to make our children receptive for receiving tougher and tougher ideas for battles that are going to face several years later. So the whole idea is to learn to learn and digging deeper is the way to go about it. Now I'm going to leave you with one hint for the question we discussed. Here it comes. Hint one, fine. Very interesting, very simple idea. And you all know about this. Suppose you're taking an average of two numbers. Let's say two numbers, three and five. Find an average of this. Three numbers, five, six, and seven. You take an average of this. What is the one thing you can say about these? I can confidently say that average is going to be in the middle. Average of three and four is in between three and four. Average of 5, 6, and 7 is in between 5 and 7. Average of 8, 9, 11, 15, 19. I don't know where it is, but it's not less than 8. It's not more than 19. You have average of a bunch of numbers. It will be somewhere in the middle. That's hint 1. I want to give you hint 2. This is wonderful. If you take a chessboard of 64 squares 
Then you say, look, I'm looking at all these numbers, 64 numbers. Out of these 64 squares, there's got to be one square, at least one square, which has the lowest number possible. And one square that has the highest number possible. The lowest number could be 3, highest number could be 98. There's going to be at least one square that has the least number possible. And there could be 10 squares that have 3. And 3, there could be no number below 3. So 3 is the lowest number. There are 10 squares that have 3. That's all right. There will be at least one square that has the smallest of all the 64 numbers. It could be joint smallest. Doesn't matter. Of all the numbers possible. That's it. I've given you the toolkit to handle this question with those two hints. Try that out. It's going to give you a video giving the solution as well. And how do we go about this? Solution is beautiful. This is 64 square thing. It's going to be at least one square where that is the smallest possible value of the 64 values. So I'm going to forget the rest of the square and then look at this. Now this square also satisfies the property that this number is the average of all the squares around it. it could be three squares around it, five squares around it. 8 squares around it, doesn't matter, all squares around it, you take the average of those numbers and you get this number. But remember, average of all those numbers is equal to this number. This number is less than or equal to all of them. So this is the smallest possible square. So the smallest possible number is 3. Right? And you're taking that square. We're taking the 8 squares around it. All of them are 3 or higher. Can a set of numbers there are three or more give average to be three you can but only in one instance if all of them are three if you have even one number more than three the average will be more than three so if this one square which we anointed as a smaller square that is three every square adjacent to it has to be three now take this square keep it aside take one of those adjacent squares which now has to be three because it has to satisfy the property look at that square which is three that is the average of all the squares adjacent to it. If it is again 3 is the smallest number, we know that. So every square around it has to be 3. Take some square around it. Every square around that has to be 3. Take some other square around that. Every square around that has to be 3. If you imagine, there can be only 3 is possible. Or the simple truth, if this property has to hold good, is that every single square in the chessboard must have the same number. So how many ways can we fill this? 100 ways. All squares can be 1, all can be 2, all can be 3, all the way till all can be 100. Excellent, wonderful, delightful, really tough question. You can have guys in college in class 12 stumped. But the beauty of this question is a student in class 6 can try this for half an hour. There's nothing syllabus wise that has missed out. And you tell her the solution for this and then the solution can be explained in 5-10 minutes and hopefully they leave with an aha moment. And then at the end of it, the next time they face a question like this, they're not going to say, hey, I don't know how to even start this question. They're going to say, okay, there is something, I'll keep knocking, something will fall in place. And that's the entire idea behind the course. Right? So do check out the course. If you have any thoughts, feedback, reach out to us. Right? Cheers. Best wishes. Hi, we have a fabulous summer camp this summer for about uh, two weeks. Wonderfully challenging questions, but in a fun format. Do check it out and sign up to get updates from us.